being a teenager in high school, you have to deal with the stresses of homework, relationships, and getting ready to go into the real world. Back in my day, it was trying to figure out how I could pass a note to my girlfriend who was in a different class or how many lunch periods I would be able to attend for the day. Welcome back to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional. 31 days of Halloween, and this is Dave from Nerdbox, and I'm accompanied by my wife, Jen, who is also from Nerdbox. And poor little Tyler has another problem on his hand, and that is figuring out if his perfect role model of a father is a serial killer. And that is in The Clove Hitch Killer. So, fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. <laughs> the perfect nuclear family 3.7 family members house white picket fence quickly unravels when tyler is out on a date and his girlfriend finds a bondage photo hidden along the side of the seat of his father's car a curious Tyler investigates his father's locked shed and finds a stash of photos that may be linked to the serial killer, the Clove Hitch Killer, who's been dormant for the last 10 years. Now he has to unravel the mystery of the Clove Hitch and the connection to his father. Clove Hitch is another one of those films that almost makes you feel like you have to take a shower. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Dylan McDermott really really made me feel dirty in this movie he was believable he was very believable <laughs> so that's probably the the bad part because he made me feel very dirty and unclean yeah so <laughs> what did you think of this one i really liked it i think that dylan mcdermott knocks it out of the park as like creepy serial killer slash father of the year <laughs> And, you know, then he had, like, his oblivious wife, you know, who was, like, doting on him and had no clue about his extracurriculars. <laughs> yeah, well, I find it hard to believe because his man cave was a lock shed. And the wife's like, oh, yeah, that's just your dad's stuff. You don't need to go in there. So as I read it, because this is based on facts about BTK killer, uh, Gary Ridgway, known for bind them, torture them, kill them. That's where the BTK cut comes from. So from what I read, that's basically because his wife was just very submissive to him. So what they don't show in the movie, but actually happens, was happening in real life with Gary Ridgway is that he was abusive. So he kept his family like, under like a tight watch and he choked his son one time at the dinner table and he so I guess when he took like his because there was a he was dormant for many mm. years and I guess the reason that he was able to stay dormant is because he had his family submitting to him uh. so he still kind of got that thrill but then like his kids grew up and they went they left home and then he needed to, like, seek that out again. Yeah, but that doesn't happen in this film. But his family... Yes, he is dormant. We just read that. I know, but he doesn't abuse his... his I said kids. they don't show that in the movie. You weren't let He doesn't listen. I was listening, but it's not that they don't show it. They don't even apply it. They do. With his wife? You don't remember... That's the one over my head. You don't remember their, their sex life was, like... Yeah, he was, like, the one in charge. He has a fetish. Okay. Well, he had many fetishes. I guess the point is, religious guy, fetish, and lock shed, instant serial killer, real life or a movie. Case closed. But the thing is, when you go inside of the shed, it doesn't look like anything more than just a shed. It's not that no one ever goes in there. He lets his son go in there with him. Yeah, but it's locked to keep people out when he's not around. So he can control that environment. I think a lot of people keep their sheds locked. 
really just off base on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's... My dad always kept his shed locked. I, like, I just found it as odd. Yeah, it I think people... Out. I mean, we had like an outdoor container with just like boogie boards in it and we kept that locked. Yeah, but you don't know what's hidden in there. Oh my God, you're an idiot. He's just mad because he's not making any sense. <laughs> people lock their sheds. You don't want them to come into your yard and steal your lawnmower when you're not around i guess yeah or your tools tools are expensive my dad's a mechanic man those things are expensive <laughs> i mean the shed inside appears to be like any like normal shed but then he has like a whole labyrinth <laughs> Just... <laughs> uh -huh. now this movie came out around the same time as summer of 84 <laughs> which was the one that i was seeing a lot of buzz about mm -hmm. and we both watched Summer of 84. I don't know what you thought of it. I thought it was just kind of bleh. Yeah, and it then, was just kind of there. Yeah, and this was the better of the two films. Yeah. Very similar in plot. Mm -hmm. Only uh, this one here was just delivered better acting-wise. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, the son doing the investigation mm -hmm. and how it impacts his life after that picture is found. They dive into that, too. Yeah. So there was a couple stories that were going on here, but this was done very well. Mm -hmm. And... I think Dylan McDermott did his homework because he really came off like a serial killer. He definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely did come off as a serial killer, but he also came off as like the doting dad and husband. And mm -hmm. he was also the Cub Scout leader, which so was Gary Fritchway. Now, the ending is not... If you know anything about BTK, it doesn't end the way BTK yeah, did. because this is loosely based off. It's of loosely it. based off. So there is there is a different ending, which I actually really liked. Uh -huh. Interesting fact, BTK gave himself some other nicknames, which include the Wichita Strangler, the Poetic Strangler, the Asphyxiator. Asphyxiator. <laughs> the the Garo Phantom, the Bondage Strangler, and the Wichita Hangman. Oh, so he was... Can you imagine he's sitting there? It's like, oh, man, let me name I know. my super villain name. Like, what? You're a fucking serial killer. Like, first of all, you should just go by your name. You shouldn't be calling yourself any special names. You're a serial killer. You're nothing to be like... No one should be looking up to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this does not happen in the film where he's trying to figure out names no. in the in the film at all he is given that name because of what he leaves behind at mm -hmm. the crime scene so yes. that's how the clove hitch killer comes along mm -hmm. if you know what a clove hitch is it's a type of knot yes now as we progress in the story there are some twists and turns that will make you feel uncomfortable while you're watching it and also some that is like oh my god is this going to happen and it kind of throws you a little bit for mm, Yeah. Yeah. There were definitely twists and turns in the movie that you don't really see coming, mm -hmm. which was nice. Yeah, I have to say that this movie, if I was going to compare it to any of those movies, there was in the mid-2000s a series of, you know, independent movies coming out on serial killers. There was Bundy. There was Dahmer. There was Gacy. They were just going by the last names of those movies. Each of those were really good for being independent films, and naturally they were on real people. This movie kind of reminded me of that. It's not low budget mm -hmm. like those films were, but it is it is disturbing like those films. So it is a good watch if you mm -hmm. like serial killers. So definitely check it out. And let us know what your rating and review of this is by putting it in our comments. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of the t-shirt game? Am I going to make it to the 31 days with different shirts? I hope so. I hope so. <sighs> We're going away this coming week. I see a lot of t-shirts being bought. <laughs> anyway, favorite snacks to watch during the film? I don't favorite know if, drink? Favorite drink? I don't know if I would eat snacks during this one. just doesn't feel right. But I would have a drink just to ease the nerves off a little bit yeah what other serial killer movies are out there real or not real do you watch and like that you would recommend you know there was the one on netflix that came out last year on ted bundy starring what's his face 
Zac Efron. Yes. And then we have... That one got a lot of hate, but I didn't... It was all right. It was okay. This is better than that. This is better than that, but I think Zac Efron did Mm -hmm. a decent job with it. There's a new Dahmer film coming out that I'm pretty excited about. Hopefully it's better than the one that had Ross Lynch, because unfortunately that one fell real short. Yeah. You didn't watch it. No, I didn't watch it, because (laughs) this one coming out has a much better actor in it. Yes. So... And Definitely. He is from the same films as, or the same TV show that Dylan McDermott was in, and that's American Horror Story. So definitely check out that. Yeah, it's Evan Peters, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's amazing. So I can't wait to see what he brings to the role of Dahmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think he's going to take it to another level. I think so, too. Yeah. Anyway. So, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. And share. Yes, definitely share. And let's stir up the conversation on horror movies to watch this month. And until tomorrow, see See ya.